April showers bring May Switch games as we have 47 brand new titles to talk about in today's All May Games video. What's going on everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Gabe is here and it's that time of the month where we recap and review every title coming out for the coming month and tell you what we're most excited for. Now, we have kept this list of games that have official release dates as many Switch titles with generic Windows end up getting delayed, end up getting pushed. We did not want to fill your hearts with hope and then have it be let down. One major game is missing from this month. After the recent delay, Dark Souls Remastered will not be hitting in the month of May, which is a bit of a bummer, but honestly, this is a really good month for Switch. There are a lot of titles, both retail and eShop-wise, that are exciting, that are awesome, and given a few surprises along the way, this could be the best month of 2018 yet. So Gabe, let's get right into the list. First off, we have surprise announcement, Animal Super Squad coming from Revel Mode, a media company owned by PewDiePie. It is a platformer that's already on early access uh, on Steam and PC, but it is coming to Switch on May the 1st. Uh, it is a game where chicken, fish, sloths are trying to survive trials-esque physics-based levels. It looks like it could be kind of cool or kind of terrible, uh, but it is made by the developers who uh, brought us Goat Simulator, so they have had some success with the uh, funny game that still is kind of quality in, in their, uh, their catalog. Yeah, this seems like one of those games where like it's like very simple like conceptually, but it's hard to get through the levels just because there's like so many obstacles in the way. I I'm sure it can be fun. I saw some YouTubers like play it. You know, of course, PewDiePie is behind this in some manner, so you know, make what you will of that. But yeah, that is the first game of the month. And there are so many more, because on May 2nd, Arcade Archive's 10-yard fight hits Nintendo Switch for $7.99. This is a football game with a timer. You are going to be racing against the clock to get first downs, and there is uh, a versus mode, so two players can duke it out. I have actually played this game way, way back when. It is no Tech Mobile, it is no Madden, but it is the first American football title on Switch, so that counts for something. Yeah, if you somehow can't wait, for the NFL to start in September and you know the draft just happened hopefully your team did well or you know your team is a Packers and all types of weird stuff happened but yes this will tide you over forget man doesn't matter anymore <laughs> oh it does matter I hope that we get mad I sure <laughs> hope that EA brings droves of titles to switch but it is a uh, double day for Arcade Archives as Neo Geo Stakes winner also it's on May 2nd for $7.99. Um, this is a realistic jockey action game so if you are obsessed with horses but not the horses more of the jockeys uh, you can live that life. I guess it's also the horses you're, you're kind of pumping those buttons to make your horse go. Um, it is a masterpiece that built a generation for video games. That's what they're saying it's it's published by Hamster, um, two players, and it is a faithful recreation of the 1995 game from SNK. Had you heard about this? I have never heard of <laughs> Neo Geo Stakes winner, but I will say that like there are some decent horse games out there. So <laughs> what? you know, name a decent <laughs> horse game, please. Um, there's a recent one on 3DS. I'm blanking on the name, but it's like a card based game on 3DS. <laughs> okay, what is that game called? Uh, horses 3ds no I'm, I'm gonna look it up but gave up which are you more interested in 10 yard fight or are you more interested in uh and horses this greatest stakes yes i probably have to say 10 yard fight just because i like football i know nothing about horses other than i fell off of one when i was a kid oh god yeah. pocket card jockey that's the 3ds game it's actually pretty cool okay all right <laughs> so many games we got to move along tech <laughs> yes we do next up is timberman verse uh, and this has nothing to do with Kesha or Timberland. It has to do with <laughs> chopping things. Bigger, better, more chops. They say that this game is loved by millions around the world, and it now has new polish. Um, in a special versus version, there are races, hero mode, uh, classic Timberman, train your axe skills, gain XP to develop your account, beat your high score, prove you're the real thing. It's now coming to Nintendo Switch uh, for the low price of $1.99, and um, you can chop things such as tires trees and more please let us know in the comments below if you're one of the millions playing timberman already <laughs> yeah it's published by forever entertainment and brings more sporty action 
to the Switch. But May 3rd isn't just about fun and games, Gabe, because Professional Construction the Simulation also hits for $39.99. This is a physical cartridge, and it's all about immersing yourself in the fascinating world of road construction. Gabe, have you ever wanted to go to an open world full of quarries, ports, and train stations? Have you ever wanted to use special vehicles like a bulldozer, flatbed truck, a mill truck? You ever wanted to fuel aircraft, sell vehicles, dispose of rubble, organize materials? This is the game for you. You can repair, excavate, and repair some more. <laughs> Brought to you by Raylight Studios and United Independent Entertainment. This is the simulation we've been waiting for. I can't, I can't say I've ever wanted to do any of those things. And if, and if I'm honest, when I play video games to escape from my everyday mundane life, construction is not where, where I want to go with it. But hey, all right. The type of person that, that loves this game, like, I like honestly respect that because like, there is a, a – there's got to be like such a, a dedication to the sport of construction. It's not a sport. Um, Hold on. Relax. To um, the game of construction? To the lifestyle construction, construction? you know, it, it's a very difficult job and one that I, you know, respect very much. Uh, it, it's not an easy thing to do. It takes hours and hours of time. You're out there in, you know, the sun generally. It, it, it's not pleasant. And the fact that you cannot do it in a video game in a safe environment, I guess that's cool. I mean, I, I just want to know, like, what is the motivation for saying, hey, we're going to fill this void? You know, what you know what's missing? <laughs> construction sim. Mm -hmm. Anyways, that's, that's May 3rd. Uh, pretty busy first week because we also get Perfect Angle for $9.99 on Nintendo Switch. This is a puzzler where you can challenge your mind with optical illusions. There are over 100 puzzles. 3D perspective. It reminds me a lot of um, uh, sort of like those iPhone, like manipulate the object in order to line things up and and uh, solve the puzzle. Um, so, yeah, it's published by Ivanovich Games. It's one player. And it is a simple game for relaxed gaming. Yeah. I mean, if you're ever working a construction site, maybe this is a game you might want to play. Right. If you are, if you're manipulating 3D objects and optical illusions, go get Construction Simulator. If you are a construction worker, go get uh, Perfect Angle. There you go. Um, or you can grab a, another title, and this one releases on the fine day of May the 3rd as well. And it is Cast of the Seven Godsends. It's already out on Steam. It came out two years ago on Steam. Um, it is a classic 2D run-and-gun action shooter game, four levels of difficulty, six worlds to conquer, 12 mid- and end-level bosses, seven godlike armor sets, five weapons, 35 magic spells. Um, not a lot to say. It is made by Merge Games and Ivy Productions, uh, Ra Raven Travel Studios as well. It has mostly positive reviews on Steam. While you're waiting for the messenger, I guess this could fill uh, that that void. Yeah, kind of reminds me of like the old Golden Axe games. Um, mm -hmm. You know, cl clearly not like super similar, but it, it, it definitely gives off those vibes. Um, I might check this one out just because sometimes I feel nostalgic for games like this. But mm -hmm. yeah, out now on Steam, like you said, mostly positive reviews. Same day, different title, Nihilumbra or Nihilumbra. For $7.99, this has been released on other platforms previously, but now it's coming to the Switch. You can change uh, the ground physics using five different colors, and there are five worlds for you to play around in. Um, it's listed as an adventure platformer puzzle action game, um, and it says you'll unlock a great surprise by completing the title. Um, I believe this got some pretty positive reviews when it first came out. Um, it has a very uh, depressing look. But kind of a cool conceit. So again, that's seven ninety nine May third. I'm gonna move us right along, Gabe, to Johnny Turbo's Arcade Sly Spy because this is the game for you. Six ninety nine May third. The day just never ends. Secret agent, use your jetpack and the golden gun and save the world from evil. Do you ever play GoldenEye and wish you got the golden gun? Well, now you can have the golden gun. Always save the world from evil. Capital E. Yeah. That is Johnny freaking Turbo's Arcade. This is the second time you say a Johnny Turbo game reminds me of me. <laughs> You keep making he, that is that is connection. Is he you? Is that your your pseudonym? I might Johnny be, Turbo. I might be Johnny Turbo to be honest. You might be. Um, you might be. Japanese mahjong. They don't mess around. No ninety nine cents. Five dollars. <laughs> don't don't even you know they're they're taking your extra penny. Two players are available with a single device. You can work with a buddy uh, and compete against two CPUs for some mahjong. Um, mahjong. Okay. Also on May 3rd, don't die, Mr. Robot. Stay alive in the Electro Abyss game. It's a remixed version of the much-loved arcade bullet hell avoid em up completely rejuvenated for Nintendo Switch. Get the fruit, avoid the enemies, try not to die. 
pretty darn simple. Um, the game is, like I said, nine dollars, and it reminds me of Snood. If you ever played Snood, yeah. was this a mobile game at one point? Kind of looks like it, it was. Sure looks like it. Yeah. All right. Don't don't die. Can I, I mean, spoil the game? Of- Can I spoil the game? Uh, Spoilers. Uh, okay. They want you to try not to die, but you're gonna die. Sorry. <laughs> Man, that that hit me harder than Avengers. <laughs> all right, but getting through all of that, and, and you know, Grant, there may be some some goodness there, but getting through <laughs> all of that gets us to Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, which is probably the best game of the month. Now it's a port. Now it's more expensive than the original edition, but May 4th, $60. May the 4th be with you, Donkey Kong, because you sure are a magic monkey, bringing insanely awesome 2D platforming action with difficulty and charm to the Switch. This is Retro Studios. We have no idea what they're doing, but they are at least letting you experience one of their greatest entries. Now on the Switch, it is going to be fantastic to take portably. It has the new easier funky mode with Funky Kong. Um, But the game is absolutely glorious. The secret stages are just finger burners. You will be mashing your fingers against that switch over and over trying to defeat these levels, and you will feel so satisfied once you do. It's it's a really top-tier game. Port or not, um, it's super freaking fun, and I will probably double dip. Yeah, I am very excited to play this for the first time pretty much because I never played this uh, on Wii U for very long at all. So it's going to be exciting for me. Maybe we'll do some streams, bring you guys some handheld footage, things like that. Very, very cool game that I'm looking forward to quite a bit. Also, long live Donkey Kong. Funky Kong, excuse me, is what I wanted to say. Yes, he is your dancing partner for always. If, if Dancing with the Stars was a YouTube thing, Gabe would pick Funky Kong. Yep. Um, but it's not. So instead, Gabe is going to pick Shantae because she is back with Half Genie Hero Ultimate Edition for $27. No no 99 cents. Again, not sure about this trend, but it's, it's here to stay in May. Um, this all-inclusive version comes with all the previously released DLC modes and costumes. The games are beloved. By quite a few. They are uh, very pretty 2D platformers with big boss fights and a whole lot of clever action. Uh, You are going to conquer Sequin Land as the evil Risky Boots in Pirate Queen's Quest. Um, Save the day as belly dancing half genie Shantae. um, And play through all of the DLC. A lot of people know of these games from way forward. They are, like I said, respected. And if you have not yet experienced them, 27 bucks seems like a pretty fine price, especially for a physical cartridge. Absolutely. Next up, we have Raging Justice. Not to be confused with Crazy Justice, which is bringing Battle Royale to the Switch later this year. Raging Justice as a, is a beat-em-up uh, labeled as a Streets of Rage successor. Um, it's coming out on May the 8th for $14.99. And uh, people think it's a, a good value. It's got co-op got a lot of characters um and it brings back sort of that old school side scrolling beat 'em up fighter game um that you may have played long ago now with far superior graphics and what looks to be quite a bit of polish do you ever miss games like this i do not i mean no. I, I really love being at homer in the arcade and like playing tmnt or the simpsons or stuff like that but i feel like it's a, a bygone era i know that a lot of people still get extreme enjoyment out of them i see jeff gersman streaming them a lot <laughs> i just i can't really get into this anymore yeah no i I was just curious i I think i fall more in line with you where like i think i've moved past what these games are but hey this one does look very good Mm -hmm. yeah it does um what about three-fourths home extended edition gabe you don't get a whole home uh you get three-fourths it's an award-winning critically acclaimed visual short story that explores the emotional ties of family relationships this nine dollars releases on may the 10th and it's about kelly who's in her mid-20s forced to move back to nebraska um, and a typically intense Midwest storm is approaching. She has to get home. Uh, in the 20 miles between her grandparents' crumbling barn and her parents' house, she receives a phone call from her mother, and that is where this game takes place. Now, the extended edition includes an epilogue that expands on the story. Now, Kelly is in Minnesota in that epilogue. What the heck is going to happen next? This oddly sounds intriguing to me. Kelly, don't worry. I'm going to find out what happens. I'm going to play this. Um, it, I hope it's not one of those like 30 minute games that I run into uh, on Switch sometime. Every time I see like a story based game that I think looks really cool, it always just ends up being like 30 minutes. <laughs> but uh, I'm hoping that's not the case here. If it is, that's okay as well. The price uh, nine dollars, um, not not too much of an investment, but I'm gonna check this one out. Yes, um, Gabe, the title is a little uh, little intense, but Suicide Guy is hitting Nintendo Switch on may 10th as well and this is a game um it's a first person puzzle game where you're trying your best um 
to, I can't even tell if you're trying to stay alive or if you're trying to not stay alive. It, it, it kind of seems like a little bit of both to me. Um, I, I guess you're saving yourself. Uh, there's weird dreams and it's trying to kill him and you're trying to it's a, I mean, save. It's a puzzle game, so. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, so the suicide is not what you're causing it says in the description that despite the title the game is not at all about suicide repression it's actually a funny game um rock paper shotgun says it has buffoonish physics and big flappy hands so if you're up to that uh, it's five dollars on steam hopefully a similar price on switch although i wouldn't be surprised to see this hit the 9.99 mark it actually does look fun and cool it oddly reminds me of like wallace and gromit if wallace like was younger and buffer and had a bunch of weird dreams Thanks to that pesky penguin, but um, I've been having, I'm actually going to check this out. I've been having weird dreams. This kind of looks like me, so eh, maybe it's my game. Yeah, so ignore the title and enjoy the silliness. It does look actually pretty cool. Uh, May the 10th also holds one of my favorite eShop games of the month, Super Chariot. Guys, I'm telling you, when this came out initially on Xbox 360, it was absolutely so much fun. It is one of those kooky co-op games that will have you yelling at your friend or partner, but in the best way. It reminds me of Overcooked, not in action or mechanic but just in the overall feel it is a co-op game where you're pulling this chariot and it is very hard there are 25 levels five colorful environments and you are going to need to manipulate this chariot via ropes and physics and gravity in ways that you never thought possible it's all about working together getting frustrated and overcoming um, 60 hours of gameplay they claim as this is the ultimate edition here 1999 may 10th i think this is a must buy yeah, I've never played it, but I'll probably check it out, um, given your glowing recommendation. 60 hours of gameplay, that's a lot of hours, Zach. Yeah, and some of that may be because you're stuck over a ledge for like two hours straight trying to figure out how to not lose progress, but also get forward. Um, no, it's it's a great time. It really is. If you have a buddy, a brother, a friend, a girlfriend, a mom, a dad, someone that will play video games with you, like you got to experience this. And a number of other people got to experience One Piece Pirate Warriors 3 coming to Switcheroo also on May 10th. There's a deluxe edition um, as well, a physical version. But this is a previously released game now hitting Switch. Um, The deluxe edition of One Piece Pirate Warriors 3 allows players to gather every member of the Straw Hat crew and experience Luffy's journey from Fuchsia Village to the island of Dressrosa ruled by the evil Doflamingo. Uh, base game, 40 pieces of DLC, and now there's local co-op using the Joy-Con. Yeah, I'm not familiar with One Piece very much, but um, I do notice that there's a bunch of like cool other anime games coming, including um, My Hero Academia and things like that. So, yeah, cool. More up Gabe's Alley, Gabe's Alley on May 10th may be uh, Immortal Redneck, 1999. Gabe, Blast a Swarm of Mummies. <laughs> I think it's so funny. <laughs> the title is Immortal Redneck, but then the... the the byline is blast a swarm of mummies using more than 50 weapons and explore Giza's pyramids in this frantic shooter. I don't know why the immortal redneck is going to Egypt, but he is, hey. and it's an FPS with roguelike elements. <laughs> yeah, doesn't matter. Uh, old school FPS, frantic gameplay, twitch controls, and arcade style. Uh, it seems very, very cool for the price. $20, not bad. And, you know, a good FPS on Switch is always something that I'm looking forward to. Uh, you know, the last one that I truly had a good time was probably Doom. So, um, yeah, I'm excited for this one. Nine playable classes, um, randomly generated dungeons. There's a skill tree, so you will be having sort of that uh, meta progress as you move through the game. Huge bosses, 35 enemies, different scrolls, 50 weapons. It actually looks pretty freaking cool. Um, Also looking cool on May 10th is Garage for $14.99. This is from Tiny Build. Um, They had their showcase, and this is one of the games. In fact, the game they featured the most. It is a bloody top-down shooter in the style of an 80s B-movie. You play as a drug dealer standing alone against hordes of the undead. Explore this giant underground parking garage and try to survive, find new weapons, master them, solve the mystery of this cursed place and the creatures that inhabit it. Gabe, I know you were jonesing for this one when we saw that first juicy trailer. Yeah, definitely gave off those Hotline Miami vibes. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I want to help a drug dealer <laughs> kill zombies. Why not? Uh, u- unique premise, uh, unique visual style. Uh, of course, it is like a top-down shooter, so we know what we get with those a lot of the time. But I always like the gameplay loops in those games for some reason. So, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to this. All right. If you haven't blown all your money by May 10th because of all those games from Super Chariot to Garage to Donkey Kong, May 11th brings us Hyper Sentinel for twelve ninety nine. It is an arcade shoot 'em up Face-melting, pixel-pumping, neo-retro arcade shoot-em-up, 60 FPS, 
Blast through hordes of alienoids, tackle endless waves of invaders, battle epic level guardians, 12 electrifying levels, face melting love letter to classic games from 4, 5, 6 pixel and Huey games. It is one player and it is looking uh, like a freaking electrifying time. Yeah, you know, the thing that stands out to me is 4, 5, 6 is one digit off from my uh, area code. <laughs> I don't, That's creepy. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> All right, but you will like, I think, Gabe, Battle Chasers Night War. This finally releases on Switch May 15th. It came out a long time ago on other platforms. It's 40 bucks, physical and digital. It is a traditional turn-based JRPG, but with a very cool art style. There are action-oriented, randomly generated dungeons loaded with traps, puzzles, and secrets. You will be collecting uh, six different heroes, from the famed Battle Chasers comic series, and it has that Joe Mad art. This is developed by Airship Syndicate, brought to you by THQ Nordic. Um, I've actually been waiting for this one. In fact, review code just hit my inbox, so we will be checking this out. It looks pretty dope, and of all the JRPGs that have hit Switch, I don't know, I guess this more like westernized art style and, and aesthetic has me pretty pumped. Yeah, um, I've been looking forward to it. Um, I'm happy that it's forty dollars instead of sixty. Uh, that, that that's a really good price point for a big RPG like this. I feel like, uh, and I don't know much about the world, uh, uh, you know, that this game is based on. But hey, probably a good time to find out. Absolutely, um, that is one of the highlights of the month. And then we'll move to uh, Wizard of Legend. This game is coming to all platforms, including the Switch, on May the fifteenth. Um, it is the debut project from Contingent99, who is an L.A.-based developer, and they wanted to create action-adventure games from the SNES era that emphasized item discovery and exploration. Wizard of Legend is a fast-paced, spell-slinging dungeon crawler with an infamous, an, an infamous, infamous, an emphasis on dynamic magical combat. During combat, you have to move quickly and chain spells together to try and survive. It supports local co-op, no online co-op. Um, again, Fast-paced dungeon crawler, roguelike elements, become a wizard, and uh, try to survive. It's very top-down, very old-school aesthetic. It does look kind of cool. One may argue that these games are a dime a dozen on Switch, but we have seen gems emerge um, from the familiarity of pixel art. Yeah, no, nothing like this. Like, looking at the gameplay, this is, like, super exciting for me. It looks very, very cool, to, uh, it, like, very fluid and, like, fast-paced combat, like they claim. I'm excited for this one. Th this one, something about this one, it, it makes me want to really play it and especially in that co-op uh I, i'm gonna try to find someone to play this you know couch co-op with me sweet 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 we're moving right along though gabe because penguin wars coming into Nintendo switch may 15th this is brought to you by dispatch games and city connection join riley and his friend penguins on their journey to gira gira island collect items earn candy to evolve your favorite character buy skills to build special moves you can play one-on-one -on -one, two on two or even play with different rules such as using bombs or other items uh, there is a local verse mode. There is an online verse mode. Um, Peng Penguin Wars, man. Yeah. It's it's like a... I guess it was originally released in 1985. You Each player has 10 balls to throw at each other. You're trying to throw... It's like dodgeball-ish, kind of. It's Penguin Wars, Zach. The sequel to yeah. Infinity War. No... It's like dodgeball, but like one on one. I don't know. It's okay. If you, like, look, if you have a, 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 if you're fiending for penguins, pick up Penguin Wars. Otherwise, let's move on to Splitter Critters. Um, this is a iPhone game that is now hitting Switch May fifteenth. Splitter Critters is an award-winning freeform puzzle game that puts world-splitting power into your hands. You're gonna have to split and rearrange the world in order to solve these puzzles and advance throughout the levels. Um, it has an immersive soundscape. It has diverse planets full of danger. It was very well regarded on iPhone. I don't know the price, but again, if you feel a type of way about mobile making its way to Switch, you'll feel a type of way about Splitter Critters. Otherwise, it does look kind of cool. Yeah. This oddly looks good. You know, I, I am one of those people that kind of does feel a way about mobile coming to Switch. I, I don't like it too often, but, you know, stylistically, this one seems cool. And the gameplay where you're just, like, cutting the, the levels to, like, make the little thingy go to where it's supposed to i don't know i'm into it a little bit um i know you're mostly into though gabe death road to canada so may 15th is a pretty darn perfect day giving you both battle chasers night war and death road to canada this game was um delayed due to the very unfortunate and sad uh 
tragedy up in Canada um, in April, and they pushed it from April 25th out of respect um, to those affected. So it now hits for $14.99 on May 15th. Um, we talked about this previously, but it is a top-down, pixel-styled, roguelike survival zombie shooter game that has a pretty cool concept and definitely one that I know Gabe's going to check out. Yeah, we had said that we were excited for it when we first talked about it in that video, and uh, nothing's changed. You know, I'm all for the game getting pushed back because of that, you know, tragedy in Canada. That that, that makes complete sense. Didn't mind that one bit, uh, but it's cool to see that the release date has been shifted to something not that far away, and we're going to get to play it soon. There are some story-based decisions. You will be acquiring new characters. There's local co-op. It does look very cool. Fourteen ninety nine, May fifteenth. Um, let's continue to uh, move along the month. May fifteenth has a lot, um, so let's take it to May seventeenth. Invisibles is a competitive local multiplayer game for two to four players. Um, you are controlling invisible balls inside a maze, and you have to go get the golden artifact. A very simple conceit. Um, I hope it's only a couple dollars. It looks like Pac-Man, but with nothing there because you're invisible. So that's a trip. It's art, man. Um, it's invisible. Again, I bring it up every month, but with how much I love Astro Bears, I will never not open the window for a game like Invisibles to be great. But um, it may not be. You might be more inclined to pick up Fox in Forests on May 17th, Gabe. Um, this is a throwback adventure where you play as Rick the Fox who has the ability to control the seasons. You're guiding him along diverse, uh, nostalgia-inducing 16-bit worlds using your wits and acrobatic attacks to overcome enemies, puzzles, and colossal bosses. You can earn resources and spend them on new items and powers. It very much looks like a classic Super Nintendo Genesis-type game. Um, it has a nice main character named Rick the Fox. You'll be blasting, collecting, and uh, abusing the seasons as you fight your way through Fox and Forests. Yeah, nah, I don't have a lot to say about this one since, you know, we've mentioned that, hey, there's a lot of these games on Switch. This one for me doesn't stand out, so I'll, I'll probably just be playing one of the other many games of this style on the console. All right, sounds good. Uh, but the month continues with some really stellar Switch games. Little Nightmares Complete Edition, May 18th, 30 Bones. This one is great. I love it. Uh, it's got that creepy, eerie vibe while still maintaining really cool um, and very tactile gameplay. This does include the DLC, which I have yet to play, so that's what I'll be getting this one for. Um, but the main game is really fun. It's not horror-based in any way, but it does evoke just sort of a, a spine-tingling unease as you progress through the world. I think it has one of the most cool endings um, of an indie game in recent memory, and they say that they have tailored it to the Switch uh, with full HD rumble support, and obviously, you can take it on the go. This is Tarsier Studios and Bandai Namco Entertainment. It's it's really worth your time. Yeah, I'm going to be all over this one. I didn't play it when it originally came out on other platforms. As soon as I found out it was coming to Switch, I knew this is where I was going to experience this. And uh, I'm all about it. I'm, I'm very, very excited. The Limbo vibes uh, speak to me. And uh, exciting. One, one of my most anticipated games of the month. Uh, same day, different genre and still a port hyrule warriors definitive edition hits switch for 60 bucks this game is already out in japan um it's had like a little bit of i would say a lackluster hype cycle i know some people are excited for it but nintendo kind of messaged this one uh very discreetly it's all of a sudden out in a couple of weeks um it's been out in japan i don't feel like there's a whole lot of fanfare obviously hyrule warriors you know it um, from the past system as well as the 3ds they now are bringing all the dlc and all of the extras together uh, 1080p and TV mode, two players on one system, you got Wind Waker skins, you've got all sorts of uh, cool creative stuff um, across all the Zelda games, and I mean, the gameplay is you know very self-explanatory. There are Breath of the Wild costumes, if that's something you're interested in and curious about. Um, if you haven't played it, they are fun. I don't know what the consensus is on if Hyrule Warriors or Fire Emblem Warriors is better, I'm more drawn to Hyrule Warriors just because I have a greater affinity for Zelda and its cast of characters. The game is not bad. It is basic but fun, and if you're looking for something that's just sort of like a hack and slash, kill tons of enemies, and, and cruise your way through levels with different weaponry and different characters, it can be a good time. Um, it's full price, $60, um, but it does fill May up with uh, another Nintendo game. Yeah, 
No, very good job explaining what the game is. And I feel like so many other people already know what it is that we can probably move on. Yes. Um, next up, we've got Tennis World Tour. A month before Mario Tennis Aces graces our faces, we've got realistic tennis with people like Roger Federer heading to the Switch. The game actually looks pretty cool. Um, it is very much in the vein of uh, Top Spin, and in fact, the development team includes veterans from that series. So bringing back realistic tennis action, we'll have to see how it ends up performing and looking, but it is hitting on May 22nd. It's one I am going to check out. I'm obviously much more excited uh, for Rosalina getting out there on the courts with the likes of Bowser Jr., but this game could still be a lot of fun uh, on your Switch. Yeah, I'm going to wait for Mario. Uh, to give me my, my, my tennis fix. Uh, this isn't what I'm going to touch. But I also don't have the affinity for tennis that you do. Yes. Yeah. Well, tennis tennis was my uh, my my main sport in high school, as weird as it is to say. Four-year varsity tennis player. Woo. Um, all right. We're making our way to May 22nd, which is the big day. It was supposed to be even bigger, um, or the big week, I guess, with Dark Souls. But we still have some really solid titles. Runner 3 from Nicholas Hits. Physical and digital for $39.99. Uh, you should know what Runner is about if you've seen any of the first games. This one looks to be the best yet. It is narrated by Charles Martinet, voice of Mario, and Commander Video is cruising his way through a whole bunch of rhythm-based platforming stages. There are uh, some retro stages that very much evoke um, Cuphead. So if you've been jonesing for Cuphead, this is nothing like Cuphead, but aesthetically it may remind you. I, I think it's going to be a really good game. Um, I'm interested to see how much content is there for the price point. Um, but I think it's going to be worth it nonetheless. Yeah, I think that this is another one of the standouts for the month. Uh, I was excited for it since they announced it. I'm glad to finally be able to play it very soon. And uh, yeah, I mean, you, you summarize it pretty well. It's an exciting game. Plus having Charles, you know, the voice of Mario, that's going to be good on a Nintendo system. Yeah. It, it, it should be cool. That day continues to be super cool with both Mega Man Legacy Collection 1 and 2. Legacy Collection 1 is available individually for $14.99. Legacy Collection 2 is available individually for $19.99. Now remember, these are not the X collections, which we'll be releasing later. These are the original collections. So Legacy Collection 1 includes Mega Man, Mega Man 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And Legacy Collection 2 includes Mega Man 7, 8, 9, and 10. 11 will be releasing as a brand new title later in 2018. The X collections will be releasing in between there. There is a lot of Mega Man action and... To top it off, you can get these in cartridge form if you want a combo pack. I believe it comes with Legacy Collection... Wait, wait, it's Legacy Collection 1 on the cart? And yeah, one is, uh, one is on the cartridge. To download. So here's the yeah. weird thing. It's $40 together. Digitally, it's 35 separate. So Yeah, you're paying a little okay. bit of a premium, but hey, you know, and cartridge... And you still download one? Yeah. Don't really like how that goes, but... Um, you do get a free Mega Man 30th Anniversary Collection cleaning cloth in okay. your physical version. So, you know, if you want to wipe your blaster down, your buster, I mean, um, your Mega Buster, then yep. it's Mega Man. I'm getting it. Same. I'm probably going to get them digitally because cheaper um, and the box art is really ugly, but yeah. yeah some, it has that annoying, like, download thing on the top, which I yeah. don't like. Some classic games in those collections as well, so... Do you have a favorite among those those Mega Man titles? Yeah, I love Mega Man 3 quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I, I like Mega Man 5 also, even though that's not like known as one of the best ones. I, I do like 5 quite a bit. 3 and 5 are my favorites. Yeah, um, for me, I'm kind of lame. I really I really have a soft spot for Mega Man 7. Um, I like that. I played that a lot with my friend Jono when we were younger. Um, it has a very nice collection of bosses. Um, Mega Man X and Mega Man 7 are probably my most played Mega Mans, so that's where I place my love i was too busy playing little mermaid and mc kids on nes okay. but uh, i'm also gonna be very busy on may 25th not with dark souls remastered because hey they have pushed that to summer but with pixel junk monsters 2 this game was announced recently it's got a very short uh little cycle here but it should not be anything less than an awesome game the demo is on other platforms it's supposed to be coming to switch still it's only 15 dollars Dude, you gotta get it. Pixel Dream Monsters 1 is one of my favorite co-op jams. Me and Jake played the heck out of that game back on PS3. It is part of the excellent Pixel Drunk series, and now we're getting a new entry on the Switch. It's hitting PS4, Steam, and Switch all on May 25th. Hopefully the full release is not suffering uh, from the slight delay that the demo saw on Nintendo's platform. This one now includes four-player co-op, a new claymation-style art. 
Um, and it's just, I don't know. I think it's going to be freaking great. So get that. May 25th. Yeah. 15 bucks. I haven't played a good tower defense game in quite a while. I mean, they used to make a ton of them. Not so much anymore. So it'll be good for me to go back to this genre in general. And what better game to do it with than Pixel Junk? Yeah, it's a genre that has found a lot of life and love on mobile, um, but I would argue that Pixel Junk is a little bit of a tier above, and so bringing that genre and that polish to Switch, ooh, going to be good. Also, Gabe, I want to see you as a Tiki Man. On it. Um, Gabe, though, you may, you know, you may like Pixel Junk Monsters, but I think you may like May 29th's top release better. Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection hits for 40 bucks. 12 arcade classics in one collection. Um, there are... A lot of Street Fighter games here. There has been some arguments and some pushback on how the games are presented with the borders and whatnot. But alas, this is going to be like the ultimate Street Fighter experience for Switch. Yeah, I don't even mind the borders because it maintains the original aspect ratio. We knew that these reports of the arcade games and, and you know not any of the console ones. I don't mind this. Um, I was a huge into arcades as a kid. Anytime we would go to the mall, I would tell my mother, hey, I'm going to be at the arcade. You go do what you got to do. And I would just play all these games. So I have very fond memories of a lot of them, uh, especially Alpha. I like Street Fighter Alpha an awful lot. It's on the collection here. I'm going to be playing this a lot. Yeah, and just for, for funsies, Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition, Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting, Super Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter Alpha 2, Street Fighter Alpha 3, Street Fighter 3, Street Fighter 3 Second Impact, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. That's what you're getting. 30 years of Street Fighter. Go, yep. go, go. It's a lot. Um, Die for Valhalla is going to have a hard time competing with that, but it also releases on May 29th for $9.99. It has a very Don't Starve-esque art style. Very similar. Um, it is a hack and slash action RPG. You can play solo or up to four players, local co op, um, procedurally generated world, rogue light elements, more than 10 Viking clans to discover, seven classes, 80 skills. You never know. Monster Couch could deliver something that surprises us, um, but that one again is 10 bucks on May 29th. Yeah, cool art style, minimal investment. Uh, why not give it a try for some co op fun? Yes, yes, yes. All right. Fallen Legion Rise to Glory is also on that date of May 29th. Um, it brings Fallen Legion Sins of an Empire and Fallen Legion Flames of Rebellion, which were previously released on uh, both PS4 and PS Vita, together. And they are a 2D side scrolling uh, tactical RPG. So you are going to be making uh, decisions, you are going to be battling. And you are going to be looking good in a very nice 2D art style. It, like, slightly reminds me artistically of, of um, what's that game called? Well, this game Has is... Has Heroes. Uh, this, yeah, yeah. Was, that and Darkest Dungeon. Those yeah. are, that's, it's a marriage of those two, I feel like. Um, there are cards, which is kind of cool. That's where you'll be making decisions and kind of, like, um, affecting combat and whatnot. Um, but it is very much in the vein of sort of, like, those Japanese, like, combat-driven um, side-scrollers. This one is turn-based, though. Um, but it still looks like there are some button presses involved. I don't know. It's, it's like a hybrid side-scrolling RPG. Mm -hmm. um, okay. May 29th does not end because we also have Yoko's Island Express. This game uh, is about a pint-sized postman. Uh, he, he's ready for the easy life. He kind of looks like a beetle or a ladybug. Um, but you are going to be flipping and bumping our pint-sized protagonist around the stunning hand-painted island on your quest to rebuild the post office and wake an old god from slumber because... What, what better thing to do on a, on a sunny day than uh, deliver the mail and wake an old god? Epic boss battles, captivating story, amazing new abilities. The game doesn't seem like it would have all that, but yet it does. Um, yeah, it, it, it looks cute. I, I don't disagree. It's published by Team 17, uh, developed by Villa Gorilla, and again, it's on May 29th. RBI Baseball finally hits on May 29th. Um, I feel like this one was delayed because it came out on other platforms, but the Switch version isn't hitting until May 29th. Um, $29.99. Now, one thing we noted when we initially discussed this was that RBI Baseball was not so good in 2017. It received a 38 Metacritic on Switch. Um, sad to say that RBI Baseball 18 has a 33 on Xbox One, so it doesn't seem like they have solved much. This game was notable for being actually developed and worked on by MLB, doesn't seem like they're very successful in the game development space. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's why the games aren't very good. They need to be playing baseball. <laughs> yeah. I just imagine the Yankees all making this game. <laughs> I mean, 
Yeah. If if you got a uh, if you if you need your baseball fix, you know, it, it's hard to recommend a game that gets a thirty three, but some people might like it. Um, THQ Nordic is back at the end of the month, May 29th, again with Legend of K Anniversary. Um, this is a game about a hot-headed young cat. Um, Raylan? <laughs> it's from the PS2. No, it's from Wii U, I guess. No, it's it's from PS2 and then Wii U, and now it's coming to Switch as well. Okay, goodness gracious. <laughs> this game is amazing. This is, this is a staggered release unlike any other. <laughs> coming to PS2, Wii U, and Switch, Legend right. of K. Okay. Um, it reminds me of those, just that era, right? Those PS2 platformers, whether you were Crash or Jack, um, whether you were Sly Cooper, whether you were Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. No one ever you... mentions Gex the Gecko. Why? whether you were Gex the Gecko or whether you were Kay the Cat. Yeah. Um, this is going to appeal to a very specific crowd who is seeking something of this this time. Um, it's a collect... You know, there's tons of collectibles, 25 levels. Um, if you want to get a THQ Nordic joint, I would probably check out Battle Chasers first. Yeah. Likewise. All right. <laughs> the date does not end. So many days just full of a deluge. Cyber Noir Action Puzzler Shift Quantum hits... On May 29th as well. We've actually covered this before. It actually looks pretty cool. Um, it is an Unreal Engine 4 game with a simplistic look and a very cool art style. It is a puzzle game, um, and you will be rotating the world um, and, again, making these quantum shifts to try and solve uh, these cyber noir puzzles. Um, you create negative space, invert the world, and transform what once were barriers into viable Escape routes. Uh, Gabe, I remember back when this was initially announced, you thought it looked pretty cool. Are you still feeling the Shift Quantum vibes? Yeah, the, the, the art style is like, you know, so unique. And the absence of color with the overpowering of like one color. I don't know. Something about that speaks to me. I'm still going to check this out. So, yeah. It's looking. weird that it's Unreal 4. I guess it's mostly the background and maybe the mechanics because the art style or like the, the in game look Simple. is very much like a game called Gunpoint. It reminds me of that a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it's out on other platforms, but it's also coming to Switch Day and Date, so that's nice. Mm-hmm. All right, Figment hits also. Uh, no, no, finally, we're moving to May 31st. Woo. May 31st, Figment. Um, this is a game that reminded us of Bastion. We covered it in a recent weekly new games update. Um, it's from the uh, developer who brought us back to bed on the Wii U eShop. And it is a puzzle game um, that centers around dreams um they say it's designed with a lot of care um and it is hitting the switch again we've talked about this previously um, but it does bring in a lot of music so that's pretty cool um you're in the character's mind it's bright and colorful it has puzzles and occasional battles figment yeah it's like an artistic mix of bastion and also broken age there you have all right. Um, Yesterday Origins comes May 31st for Switch. And this game, like, initially, you're like, what the heck is that, Yesterday Origins? Discover the latest adventure from Pendulo Studios, creators of the Runaway series. But then you get further down the description, you're like, hey, it's an investigation full of twists and turns, solve complex puzzles, successfully take on the roles of John Yesterday and Pauline Petit to discover the secret of immortality that many have sought before them. It actually looks kind of cool. When you watch the trailer, it's got a very unique look. Um, it is an adventure game. Um, there are 25 characters, 10 different places to visit, dark humor, and an original story, mixing investigation, thriller, adventure, and occultism all into one. Gabe, I feel like this is you. No, it's not, because little do people know that you are actually chasing immortality every single day. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like this is more you, Zach. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I just meant, like, adventure style-wise. Oh, yeah, Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna play this one. This one, yeah, it does look cool. I'll find immortality for you, Zach, I got you. Thanks. Just Shapin' Beats brings musical bullet hell to the Switch on May 31st. Um, this one has been recommended by a lot of you, so we're definitely going to check it out. It is one of those very fast-paced um, four-player couch co-op multiplayer titles. It looks very eccentric. Um, it's hard to sort of decipher what exactly is happening um, via the trailer, but you are surviving and trying to stay alive amidst musical chaos. Navigate Deadly Shape solo or in local or online co-op multiplayer. All do a soundtrack composed by 20 chiptune artists. They say it's going to be perfect on Switch. And, again, a lot of recommendations from you guys, so we will be checking this out. For sure. Last game, but not least, and it's uh, there's a couple of Japanese-only games, but I wanted to mention this one just because we have covered it, and we assume eventually it will come to the West. 
It is brought to you by NIS, and it is called The Liar Princess and Blind Prince. Um, it is about you guiding uh, this princess around, and there is transformation into a wicked wolf. It has a very cool art style. I'm not sure if the gameplay will match the conceit, but it does look awesome, and at one point me and Gabe said this was a story of our friendship, so I wanted to uh, remind you that it's coming to Japan on uh, on July or May 31st, and there's you know opportunity to explore these games from other regions if you want. The Switch is region free. There are some that are only in Japan um, that we did not cover, but this one again, uh, I don't know how much you know of a language barrier there will be, but it does look interesting, and I hope that it does make its way west. Yeah, same. I hope it makes its way over here because I think there will be a language barrier, and uh, I still want to guide the little blind Zach through the world. Beast of a video, beast of a month. Let's talk highlights, Gabe. Um, before we do, though, I will mention that some games such as Pode, West of Loathing, um, Moonlighter, they may be hitting. I know Moonlighter is supposed to hit, but that got pushed back on Switch. Um, Hollow Knight may appear. We didn't want to cover anything that didn't have a date because, again, a lot of these games do end up getting delayed. They do end up getting pushed, even if it's just by a few weeks. So most of those that I mentioned or that you're waiting for are going to be um, June releases. And just so you know, any game that is listed as spring um, has technically up to June 20th to release. So, again, a spring release date does not mean a May launch. It could be all the way up to after E3. Yeah. Um, I have, like, about three highlights. Um, if I can have that many, if you'll yeah. allow me to have that many. I will let you, Gaby. Uh, one, I'm going to go with Little Nightmares just because never experienced it. And hey, great time to do it. Likewise for Donkey Kong, another one that I never experienced and I know is of like the utmost quality. And I'm going to get to play them on the Switch for the very first time and take them on the go with me. And uh, third of all, I am really into the Pixel Junk series. So having this come out uh, now with the revamp like art style a little bit and tower defense making its way back into my life when i you know liked them so much when they first started happening back on xbox 360 yeah th those three are the ones i'm gonna go with for me it's going to be um a pretty eclectic mix i'm gonna go with a uh, shout out to dark souls remastered because that would have been there but it's not so instead i'm gonna go with I don't know. I, I don't really replay games, but Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze was fun enough that I am going to dip into that. I think it's going to be great on Switch. We yet to have a side-scrolling Mario or DK on the platform. Obviously, Virtual Console is absent, and New Super Mario Brothers has not reared its head. So DKC will be the first of that kind, and I'm super pumped for it. Um, I'm also going to give some love to Battle Chasers Night War. I, like I said, I just got review code. Excited to, to check that out and see what it's all about. I've heard good things. I like RPGs. None have really appealed to me on Switch thus far, so let's see if this one can do it. Um, and then I have to give a shout-out to uh, good old Super Cherry. I think that game is really underrated. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, it's, it's a tough month. I mean, I could easily also pick Runner 3, Pixel Up Monsters 2, you know, and... God, okay, I'm going to... I'm actually going to replace those two. I'm going to replace Super Chariot and Battle Chasers with Runner 3 and Pixel Monsters 2. Or I can pick five <laughs> either way. I don't know. This is this is tough. And that's a good thing. When a month has tough choices for what we like and what we're excited for, you know it's a month done, right? There are a lot of games, a lot of genres covered, and hey. a lot of releases on both the eShop and physical front. So You got five, so now I want five. Uh, go for it. Give me Mega Man and give me uh, Street Fighter. Also, <laughs> Capcom, you guys are doing work this month. Uh, I, both of those are very exciting to me just because of the pure nostalgia and they are like good games so I'm all about those as well yes and then we'll move to June with E3 Mario Tennis Aces and Wolfenstein 2 in the meantime though everybody let us know what games of May you're most excited for and which you are most interested to check out and why we'd love to hear from you in the comments down below make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest from the Switch this slew of releases and next month we're always here at the beginning of the month to update you on everything coming to your console for the following 30 or 31 days or 28 or 29, uh, depending on what the heck is going on in the weird, wacky world of calendars. Follow us on Twitter and Discord to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest, including delays, surprise announcements, and hopefully eventually Hollow Knight. Cannot wait for that one. It would be number one on my list if it was coming out. Alas, no date yet. But I'll give you a date for our next video, the beginning of June. We'll see you then. Until that time, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. We love you. For myself and Gabe, that's May. And this is Switch Force, out.